Wild times. I wonder if they just locked the original Chloe in a basement and were like, we can make way more money if we just switch a roo. Yo, what are you laughing at? You have no shirt on. I can't fucking do these transitions. I can't do it. <laughs> Dude, that is... I'm so pissed that I wasn't looking at you as you did that. <laughs> just looked like I was, was eating phenomenal. this uh, microphone like a Yeah, penis. he did. He looked like he was eating it yeah. for sure. <laughs> That's it, everybody. It's been great. The end. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Why did you get tested for coronavirus? And do you have it? That's the question. Aren't you going to introduce mind. us? What if people don't oh, know yeah. who the fuck Pretty we are, Forrest Galante? We are on, we're on episode 10. They should know who we are by now. It's nine, dumb dumb. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right, we are back with the wild times. Uh, I am joined today by executive to do. <laughs> One more time. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what executive to do song. Wow. And <laughs> all right, we are back with the wild times, episode nine. I am joined today, as always, by executive producer Mr. Patrick DeLuca. What's up, buddy? Hey, man. How you doing? Good to see you. You've been kind of uh, incommunicado this week. What's been going on? You you real busy or what's going Did on? Did a men's health time shoot all week. What of it? Sure, it's optional. <laughs> nice. Uh, we'll, we'll circle okay. back to that. Um, but the guy who's going to make fun of my men's health shoot momentarily, um, mm. Mr. Ratep, a.k.a. Peter. How you doing, dude? I'm good. Forrest, looking good today. Looking tan. Why are you so tan? Is that for the men's health thing? Look at this. Oh, my. That dude. Forrest, why are you showing me and Pat your dick on an audio podcast? Because they this told is... me to tan for this, and I got so fucking fried. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you, it's weird. Your face doesn't look too bad, but your stomach is yeah. legit lobster red. Yeah, well, my, my tum-tum and upper thighs don't get to see the sun that much. So when I when I lay out, <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, two hours should do it. And uh, yeah, my, my whole body is on fire. Why didn't you just go for the classic spray tan option? I don't know. Didn't think of it, to be quite honest. No. It's not an essential business, mate. <laughs> well, the car- business. I guarantee you Kim Kardashian's getting spray tan still. Yeah, because she has 10 of them it. in her basement. I- <laughs> she uses a different one every day. I also saw a thing floating around the internet on her. She looks nothing. I think it's Kim. She looks nothing like what she did look like five years ago. Have you guys seen this? I saw yeah. Chloe, the other None sister. Of them. Uh, it's uh, Chloe. The one that was married to Lamar Odom. Yes, it's Chloe. She, she's got a whole new head and face and body. <laughs> good for her. And personality. Yeah, so. yeah good for her. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, I wonder man. if they just locked the original Chloe in a basement and were like, we can make way more money if we just switch a roo. I feel... <laughs> I feel like what did the- somebody lock you in a basement and switcheroo with that stupid hat you have on? It's ridiculous. What are you doing? He's got a hat with flower floral pattern. It's backwards. It's got one of the fucking straps that you snap Looks together. Really Who wears those <laughs> these days? He bought that in an airport, and I know that because I was there. I- <laughs> <laughs> no, I. I actually got this in a gas station in Santa Barbara. That's what it was. Gas nice. station. My yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, you look great. You look like <laughs> All right, Peter, I got to know, you uh, yeah. You said that you got tested for coronavirus. First right. of all, what, what poor unfortunate woman spent a night with you that le- <sighs> led to you getting tested for coronavirus? And secondly, mm-hmm. what were the results? I spent the night with Pat's fiance. I can say that because he's, he's taking the headphones off to go get a white claw and he can't <laughs> yeah. hear me. That's good. Uh, we fucked. It was great. <laughs> no, just kidding. I went to, uh, so like uh, the first, they opened the beaches up here, uh, mm-hmm. and and I wanted to go on a bike ride, so I went on a bike ride, a long one, and then uh, I thought I had COVID because I started getting like a sinus infection, so I went and got tested, and then uh, it took like five days to get the test results back. I love that he doesn't know. He just got back. <laughs> so wait, you... But let's let's circle back to your story for a second here. You You thought you got coronavirus from going on a bike ride? There was thousands of people out, dude. I mean, people everywhere. It was... I was trying to social distance on a bicycle on a path with fucking a thousand people. Every single person okay. was out. I mean, I had a mask on, but like, dude, That's just fair. people breathing hard. Were people sneezing on you and coughing? Yeah, man. I mean, it was a sneeze fest. Everybody. We were all just coughing, <laughs> smacking hands, fucking high-fiving. No, it was okay. just I'll tell you, breathing man. everywhere, I guess. Yeah, he was, Forrest, he was texting me all night. We were... You know, as usual, up till six, seven oh, in the God, morning. I forgot and about this. He was, he was, you were worried. I was in panic. Like, you were really freaking I out. I thought I fucking had COVID, man. I started to get sick. I thought it was allergies. And oh, then boy. the next day, you know, when you know you're sick, like you're, you're ill, I, like it could have, I mean, it, it could have been COVID. It could have been anything. Luckily, it was not COVID. I recovered in three days pretty much fully. 
But, you know, it's it's scary, man. 2020 is not a fucking great year to get ill with another coronavirus. Well, especially, um, and we're going to jump straight into what's in the news, because I don't know if you guys saw this, especially when there are monkeys beating up researchers and stealing their samples of coronavirus. Have you seen this? <laughs> this this literally broke like 10 <laughs> minutes ago. It's no. fucking fantastic. I got to see this. Um, no, what is going on? Yeah, so there's, there was a, like a, a medical researcher leaving a lab in India... And a troop of monkeys, of macaques, literally jumped this researcher and stole her coronavirus sample. Wow, Patrick just went shirts optional. Great. Oh, my God. <laughs> the hat. I was sweating. I was sweating in that shirt all Doris day. and Patrick, for the listeners, are both now topless. Pat's got a flower floral pattern hat on backwards. And Forrest keeps flexing. What sure the fuck does. am I doing with my life right now? <laughs> I didn't do that to interrupt your story. I was just like, I can't wear this sweaty t-shirt for one more second. <laughs> sure. You just had a oh, one-up forest, dude. Ridiculous. You guys are no, such like monkeys. All right. Sorry. Like back it. to your monkeys, forest. <laughs> you guys are such monkeys. Back to your monkeys. Your macaws. Um, yeah. So, I mean, all I know is, is the, I saw this literally right before we signed on, but there was a researcher leaving a lab in India when a troop of monkeys came down, bombarded um, that researcher who had a vials of coronavirus on their persons beat that person up and stole a vial of coronavirus. And um, the last it was seen, it was up <laughs> in like telephone wires <laughs> holding on to the vial of coronavirus. You gotta- <laughs> Wait, this- we'll, we'll post yeah. the photo on social media. That is fantastic. So there is a monkey hanging on wires with a vial of coronavirus blood, right? Correct. Is that what you just, yep. you just, Forrest just flashed it in the Zoom chat. We can put this correct. up. What kind of monkey is that, Forrest? They're, uh, they're Reese's macaques, which are, you know, they're, they're all over the cities of India. They are assholes. Like, let's be clear. Like, monkeys can be assholes, and these guys are, are top of the asshole chain. I mean, they're yeah. the kind of monkey that'll, they'll, they'll, like, tear up a motorcycle, steal fruit, steal vegetables, like, mm-hmm. come in your house at night, but, in this case, one took off with I don't know the most the, the most deadly virus in the world that's causing a global <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> Did, was it a was it a macaque? What what was the monkeys that kept punching everyone in the nuts in Zanzibar? Oh, um, I think those were Sykes monkeys, if I can remember correctly. I I remember that they were big fans of just running up and giving the old open hand punch. <laughs> I'd kill. I would kill those monkeys. I would I would be they're like too fighting to the death. That sounds yeah, like a nightmare. Too quick. Man, they are pretty quick. You guys live dangerously. That's just a phenomenally asshole move by that monkey. I was, I mean, for me, there's one story this week that just is quite frankly, I'm not, I'm not sleeping particularly well <laughs> since I read it. Uh, you're aware of the animal, uh, the insect cicadas, Ooh, right? Certainly. Can you describe a, the morphology of a cicada for those who haven't seen one? Cicada is like. It's like if a cockroach mated with a cricket um, and then had some big old bumblebee wings slapped on it. And they go in life cycles of 3, 5, 7, 17, and I think 22 years where they will come out of hibernation and these certain cycles in the, billion, in the millions, uh, used to be in the billions, all get together into a big cicada orgy, um, you know, mate, lay, lay, uh, have offspring, and then, well, lay eggs actually, and then drop dead. And uh, I'm guessing that we're coming up on one of these blooms. Uh, we're coming up on one. Thank God. It's nowhere near where any of us will be. <laughs> but in uh, uh, the northern part of North Carolina, Virginia, and West Virginia, Ooh. this summer is the 17-year, they're on a 17-year cycle, and they're expecting a huge release with 1.5 million cicadas per acre. Dude, oh, boy. Per that, acre. That, yeah. is, that is insane. That, like so, how are people going? I mean, are they it, just going to be flying around? What what's going to be going? It on? Is you, liter- you can't drive on the Nothing. roads. You can't do anything. Yeah. Every, the roads are covered, dude. Yeah. You can see videos of cars getting into accidents because they're sliding on the cicadas and they can't break. Dude. That's how many there are, is, and they know they're coming. Twenty twenty is fucked up. Proportions of swarms. I mean, it's it's like something out of the Bible where the sky goes black, every tree, every blade of grass, the road, like Patrick says get blanketed in these insects and if it's a 17 year the longer the gap in the bloom so like the five-year bloom i'm making these numbers up but the Mm five-year bloom is probably 
a hundred cicadas per square acre, right? right? The 10 year bloom or whatever, the next gapped one is like 500 cicadas for, per square acre. So the 17 year bloom is like a big fucking deal. Like there yeah. are a lot of cicadas coming out. What have they been doing? Just growing underground, like just reproducing like mad or something, or are they just fucking sleeping for 17 years? And then 1.5 million, per, 1.5 million per acre. You know, my ex wanted to move to the East coast. What a bullet dodge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, think, so Forrest, what kind of a life is this? I mean, it, it, it sort of makes me wonder, like, do we really need them? It's, do we it's, really need these animals? Well, if they we do. You and sleep I'll for 17 years them. and then you come out for a day? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem important. But um, when you think about the fact that, what, what's the stat that you just said, Patrick? How many are coming out? 1.5 million per square acre. Mm. So in that square acre, you're going to get 1.5 million bio-nutrient anim- rich animals coming out into the environment, fertilizing mm. the grass, feeding the bugs. It's, it, there is whole uh, trickle-down effects that will bloom, that will occur based on this bloom that will support the ecosystem. I'm not saying for 17 more years, but it will... All kinds of things will get fed, all kinds of things. The grasses will be nourished. It it acts like a fertilizer. It's like if you blanket the entire world with a fertilizer Mm. for a short period of time, it gives it a big spike. So it's like a huge nitrogen boost to the the soil for everything that grows. Exactly. Oh, wow. Butterfly effect, man. All right. They can stay then. They can stick around. Yeah, why don't you go hang out there? Over there. Like in to, West Virginia. <laughs> can you do a, can you, instead God. of a Shark Week special, can you do a Locust special, a Locust Week special <laughs> where you just go and wear a fucking beekeeper suit and walk around <laughs> over in fucking North Carolina? That's fucking brutal though, man. Like this is, uh, 2020 is an interesting year, especially if you live there. Ooh. Yep. Oh yeah. Fucking hell. I mean, it's already terrible living there. No offense if you live in North Carolina. Pat, yeah. Pat convinced <laughs> me to not go well, ever. <laughs> well, me and, me and Forrest are, uh, we, we're, we're exchanging a lot of texts about moving I was really say, well, what, are you, what are you talking about yeah. here <laughs> you guys are just sending each other mansions that cost like two hundred thousand dollars that's exactly right yeah that's that's literally yeah. what we're doing and talking about the tax breaks for making television based out of north carolina Ooh, nice nice so north carolina if you're listening we're coming cicadas if you're listening <laughs> they're coming well Forrest's like he's like you know i just i'd like to get back to what it was like in zimbabwe where there's you know there's there's rivers and lakes and in North Carolina, you can buy a property that has rivers and lakes on it for the same amount as a studio apartment <laughs> yep. where we live. 100%. You right. can have your own river and your own lake. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. A lot of exciting news, cicadas. What about you guys? What are you doing? You got any fucking big plans? <laughs> what are you laughing at? You have no shirt on. I can't fucking your, do these transitions. I can't do it with you guys without your segue shirts. was... But just... <laughs> I'm redoing it. All right. Well, that is fucking interesting as shit. What have you guys got going on this week? Any big plans? Anything going on in your lives this week during Corona? Because I know you guys love breaking quarantine. You're obviously going to make out camping in a mountain or something. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Forrest? I uh, actually, I don't have much going on this week. I did have a men's health shoot this week, which was quite something, mm. um, which is why I'm so sunburnt. Um, <laughs> From the waist we could down. Circle, we could circle back us. to that. Sorry. Let's, let's, get, let's just get right into right. that. I'm, I've, I'm dying to know. So what? Shirt off or shirt on? Ob shirt off. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> nice. Is that why you've been training so hard? Did you know this was coming of up? Of course. I'm not going to go on men's oh! like a swap. Man. <laughs> so you knew. You knew this was happening. Because yes. uh, you had been so on the fitness. Yeah. I mean, when you told me you were only eating one Oreo per day is your only enjoyment. Dude, working out two like, hours a day. Why is he so motivated right now? Yeah. No, That's why. That is why. So, yeah. So, Men's Health wanted to do a segment on, like, what expedition prep looks like and they're like oh what you know what's your story before you got into the field like you know your crew is all like young pretty fit guys like what do you guys do and i was like well you know we we pretty much all of us train independently but we talk to each other about you know what we're getting ready for for example patrick i brought up when we were going into the cave in vietnam like we all went to rock walls and we all practice you know certain moves and climbing and blah blah blah. they're like oh we'd love to love to get an inside look at that and i was like great um you know well here's my training program for the next six weeks which i I hope men's health isn't listening. Upped like fivefold because I knew men's health was <laughs> well, it's too late now. <laughs> sure, it's already sure. done now. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, you know we, we we dug into it and it's been going really well. Been working out like crazy, uh, eating well. You know, coming up on this next trip that we're leaving on soon. And uh, and then I was like, oh well, well they want to see like how it all like ended. Well, we've all been in quarantine. We've mostly been inside. And I was like, ah, you know, it's 
my trainer's like, dude, you got you to get tan. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a tanning guy. I'm just usually sunburned. And he's like, no, you, like, you're doing a men's health shirts off shoot. Like, you got to get tan. I'm like, all right, yeah. you got it. Um, so pulled out the old Speedo and uh, <laughs> yeah. oh my slapped God. that bad boy on and lay out on my driveway with some couch cushions. And, you know, <laughs> just gave it, gave it a couple hours and was like, yeah, two hours in the sun seems about right. Oh, and, man. Uh, and this is the result, gentlemen. Oh, God. Oh, dude, gross. Dude, let, me, <laughs> let me see your dick, though. Let me see. So let me describe <laughs> what Forrest just did. He just stood up and pulled his shorts down and revealed a little more. You said it was a speedo. That looks like a woman's string bikini that you were wearing. It, it was. Yeah. You have the tan line of a woman who laid out on the beach in Ibiza. <laughs> That's right, and says it like that. The worst kind of person. <laughs> um, well, wow. My, so you got you got a nice red. Yeah. Did you do the shoot already? Because you got to wait for that to turn into a tan. To understand how bad the sunburn is, I want you to understand that it took place on Monday and it's now Friday. Oh my so god. I was like, "Oh, if I if I cook myself a little on Monday, come come Friday morning when the final shoot is, I'll be nice and brown. I'm not. I'm bright red and I'm going to be featured in Men's Health uh, a nice shade of tomato red." So, um Yeah. Is what it is. <laughs> I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's a week later. Have you posted that on your Instagram to drive the ladies wild yet? God, no. P- but, please but now do. I think I have to. You yeah. have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is there's still photos, and it is one click to turn that red to a nice uh, silky brown. That's right. That's right. And for I won't be doing it, but hopefully the men's health editors will. That or they're just going to go hard 180 and be like, this guy's a clown. He showed up in a Speedo <laughs> tan. <laughs> like, what is going on? They're going to kick you out. <laughs> Dude, no, yeah, they'll do it. They're gonna Photoshop. So, it, what dude. were you wearing? Were you wearing like the hex, like pajama bottoms, and just no shirt? Like, what did you wear for this for the photo spread? <laughs> no, it was just just a pair of workout shorts and no shirt. God, were you flexing? That's it. Got did it. did a lot of pull ups, a lot of bench press. You know, a lot of like real real A type alpha man. Oh my like, dude, uh, I cannot well, fucking know, wait to see this and make fun of you. It is gonna be you fantastic. can't make fun of these, Peter. Oh, I can, and I <laughs> will, cannot. and I will. <laughs> Though the thing that's cool is that like a lot of the men's health type stuff is is just vanity workouts, and you know, for the most of the year we work out for vanity, right? But prepping for the shoot, like the one that's coming up, it's it's very much functional training, right. especially for you, where you're going to be, I mean, I guess we can't get too much into it, but you're going to be doing a lot of swimming. And very mm. cold swimming, yeah. And, nice. and yeah. we've been training for that. We've been doing like workouts and respirating masks and, uh, you know, sprint training with limited breath holds and some fun stuff. And, you nice. know, it, yeah. it it's cool. It's been cool. I'm, I'm stoked for that men's health piece to come out. But... Uh, Patrick, you got something exciting going on. <sighs> so decided officially last night, uh, going to get in the car tomorrow morning and make a 40 hour drive with pets in the car. Yikes. So you're going across country. Yeah. So going from uh, Southern California to upstate New York, uh, my, my brother has a vacation home that's not in use. It's got a boat and paddle boards and just it's right on the lake it's real pretty there oh. it's you know two mile jog through the woods to like a massive canyon full of gorges and waterfalls oh, wow. um so since we're all working from home leading up to the shoot i figured let's go spend a few weeks there yeah. but that is literally the longest there forever. drive you can do in the continental united states <laughs> Le- legit yeah. i mean if we if we kept going to maine it, it would be a little bit longer but i mean it's it's 2,800. There's one road that you're on for 2,600 miles. Oh God. That's insane. Yeah. So <laughs> you have two animals, both a cat and a dog. So, you know, historically, Indeed. cats and dogs don't get along. You're going to have these two animals like cooped up in your tiny little Miata. What do you drive again? A Miata? <laughs> Yeah, Miata. You have an SUV. <laughs> Are you going to drive without your shirt and with that hat on and the animals in the car? The whole way. The whole All way. Right, yeah, sorry. I don't want the local police pulling us over because of my California plate, so I'll take the shirt off, <laughs> probably put my pants off. Yeah, the pants. Um, take the pants off. That's a necessity. Yeah, but we'll see, man. 40 hours in the car. Hopefully, the cat and the dog are best buds right after this. Well, so I, y- you know who's not going to be yeah. best buds are you and your significant other because <laughs> you will be- know, man trying to kill each other are you guys planning stops on the way or are you trying to do this like rotating driving because hotels have got to be a nightmare uh no hotels are open 
They're open. They're sanitizing them. Yeah, I'm um, sure they are. I don't think it's going to be that hard to okay. get. Well, then I won't eat my you, fucking room you're, service. You're off definitely the floor. going to get coronavirus. <laughs> so are the animals. You're all fucked. You're going to take it to your brother's house and his children and his family. Well, they're they're, they're not fucked, there, dude. thankfully. So it's just us. Well, you should go. You should also, stop you're buying. You're being very mean right, right now, Peter. Why don't you, just, <laughs> why don't you <laughs> just take it easy? I'm sorry, I dude. When you guys took your shirts off, I, I'm just <laughs> disgusted. Like, I, I don't know what you're doing. And also, Pat is like constantly. I don't even know if he knows he's doing it, but he's like he's like flexing and checking himself I, out, I, and first it's of all, absurd. I can't see myself, I'm one. I have a one inch thumbnail. That's a lie, I've, sir. I haven't flexed at any point. <laughs> I'm just sitting here with my shirt off, enjoying. I'm probably cutting all this out because it's nonsense, but it's true. It like I just can't even deal with this right now. I can't stop um, laughing. I that's can't. good. That's good. I'm glad you're in a good oh, mood. Man. All right. What do people want to hear about, guys? There's got to be more interesting shit than our bullshit. Yeah. So look, you guys are big. You guys are big sports fans. Um, you guys familiar with George Hill, the NBA player for the Milwaukee Bucks? He won me a bunch of money uh, two years ago in the playoffs. I had him in DraftKings, and he went off. Yeah. I remember he won me like 500 bucks. I was excited. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, he's probably made more than 500 dollars because I think so. I found out recently. <laughs> that he owns an 850-acre ranch in central Texas Ooh. where he has a mix of animals. And not just, like, African animals. He's mixing, like, zebras with ostriches and kangaroos and oryxes and deer and wildebeest, mm. like, all kinds of stuff. And he's just created his own custom savanna in Texas Hill Country nice. um, where he goes Ted Nugent on it and just cruises out into the woods and, and shoots something and grills it up, and uh, that's that's what he does. Does the biodiversity that's there make sense? Like, are those animals that are okay to be together, or is that is that no bueno? Well, he's got all herbivores, so there's no reason that they would be in oh. conflict with each other. I'm, I'm sure there are certain problems with it environmentally, but it's also his own piece of private land. You know, there's no problem right, but- with him keeping them free roaming. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny because, look, I'm obviously not a pro hunting guy, right. but I can totally understand the appeal, right? If I could own 850 acres with a beautiful house on it and have, have a Garden of Eden of animals running around, I wouldn't go out and shoot them, but I, I can understand the appeal of having all these free roaming animals. Like, to me, that's... One, that's much more humane, but two, it's also just way more fun and enticing than, say, a Joe Exotic place where they're sitting stuck in cages and you have to be terrified of your pets. Right. So I think it's pretty cool. There's a guy named Brent Burns who's uh, he's one of the best defensemen in the NHL. He's like this giant, like six foot eight, toothless <laughs> country boy. Yeah. And he, he lives on a ranch that he's kind of turned into a zoo. And I watched a little thing about it. He's got like a thousand zebras. Oh, wow. And so he's just like riding this golf cart through this huge (laughs) like herd of zebras. And I think I remember hearing at one point that zebras are like not the... Not the nicest animals? No, they're jerks. And they're dumb as dirt, too. <laughs> <laughs> like dumber than a domestic horse? <laughs> I, I would say so, yes. And definitely meaner. Did they have them in Zimbabwe on your on your farm? We didn't have them on the farm, but they are native there. Um, our farm was mostly fenced in, so we didn't have them coming and going. But they're, they're native. We saw them a lot. They are dumb. They are mean. Um, <laughs> I don't dislike them as an animal, but they're just, they're just not like... They look pretty. I guess they're an expensive sure. mobile lawn ornament. That's what I'd consider them. Yeah, exactly. So this George Hill guy, conservation-wise, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Like, I mean, he's hunting his own food. He's not like buying into the factory farming or anything like that. What What are your thoughts on that? Is it good for conservation? No. Like he's got exotic animals where they don't belong. Um, you know. But when you take a step back, from, you know, and those animals can cause damage, they can erode the earth, you know, they don't belong in that ecosystem. Right, okay. But when you take a step back from that, and you consider that this guy owns his land, right, it's 850 acres, the mm-hmm. meat he's getting, and I don't know everything about um, about George Hill, but the right. meat he's getting, he goes out and hunts. These animals are, are breeding freely. It's all fenced in, so they supposedly can't escape. It's all legal in Texas. So, like, from an ethicality standpoint, you know, what he's doing going out and shooting a kangaroo on his own property, even though it probably cost a lot to get the kangaroos there, probably better for the environment than going to In-N-Out Burger and ordering four double-doubles. You know, So it's like right. it, it, it's like a catch-22. People look at it and go, how could you do that? What an asshole. You're going out and shooting these things and you're putting these animals here. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I don't think everyone should or can do it, but is his environmental impact lower because of it? It might be. Well, it's one of those things because, you know, at first when Rogan would talk about going bow hunting and stuff, it would kind of annoy me a little bit because I, I, I just hate like thinking about animals getting hurt at all. Mm-hmm. But then like I thought about it 
quite a bit. And I was like, well, that's definitely probably better than like what's going on when I buy meat from like foster farms at the at the grocery store. Oh, there's definitely some truth to that. Those those big mass farming places have a lot worse of an environmental impact than someone going out and and this part is key, sustainably harvesting their own meat because right. there is there's ethical, there's sustainable and there's legal. And if you check all three of those boxes, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. There you go. Straight from the ugly zebra's mouth. So three young boys, teenagers in South America, three three young teens decided they wanted to turn into Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were able to procure a Black Widow spider. Oh my God. And they all uh, intentionally let the Black Widow bite Jesus. them. Oh boy. Now here's where it gets interesting, guys. It didn't work. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> but it made, me, it made me think. If you could let an animal bite you, but then you would get its powers. Mm. You got to go through the bite, though. You got to go through the bite. What animal would you pick and why? Ooh, interesting. Peter, go for it. Is this our battle royale tonight? No, no. Oh, okay. This is a pre prelude to the battle royale. <laughs> it's it's the amuse bouche. Okay. <laughs> Peter, go for it. Well, I'm going to go with a fucking bald eagle. I'd take a bite from a bald eagle so that I could fly <laughs> and fucking peck and, and hunt mice and whatever the fuck they eat. <laughs> I thought you'd like. I thought you were gonna go with a rat, so you could have a needlepoint tail. No, man. Ten th- after <laughs> the is- ten thousand rats, I'm done with rats forever. <laughs> <laughs> I would go octopus. I would let an octopus Ooh. bite me. They have a, a, a nasty little beak mm-hmm. on them, don't they? But uh, I like the idea of having nine hearts. Yeah. Because uh, then I could live a lot longer. Certainly. Uh, I, I would do. I do a lot of cocaine if that was the case, because I would just go through a few hearts. Yeah. Uh, I could change color to blend into my surroundings, which would be nice. That would be cool. Yeah, go into go into the local Macy's and steal some underwear after they close. These, these are good so, tools. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't see yeah. that I was there. Yeah, so I'd go octopus. You'd also be very tasty and and a coveted meal for humans with big brains to try and kill you and eat. So that's, I mean, you'll have that going for you. <laughs> Ugh, so negative. <laughs> you were so negative today, dude. I can't deal with the shirts off. It's making me real <laughs> moody, dude. It's, it's brutal. You guys are just flexing, and <laughs> it's crazy. It's, I'm sorry that we're in great shape. Yeah. I don't know what to say it's about it. It's just good lighting. Just, <laughs> Peter, just take your shirt off. I, I know you want I know. to. I do, um, but I got to go get right. a white claw before I do. I was smart. I, uh, I'm going to go from a, a bite from uh, the common goldfish so that I could breathe underwater. <laughs> <laughs> and have no pain as a result. Yeah, I wouldn't feel it. And uh, the results are tremendous. It's interesting that Forrest went last and had the only sensible answer of the bunch. <laughs> what are you talking about? A fucking bald eagle, man? I could fly. That's, I c- that's going to take a pound of flesh. <laughs> so hold on. Let's circle back to the Bolivian Spider-Man. Um, here's what I don't understand. Where did they get a black widow in Bolivia where they don't occur? Ooh. Ooh. Now, these are the questions. Do you think these kids went on a hunt for a black widow? Like, they, they had someone bring it into Bolivia to have it bite them? Like, how did this happen? I, I have a theory. What's your theory? I mean, it's the correct theory. They they bought it online with Bitcoin, <laughs> obviously. You're, you're probably yeah. right. <laughs> That's the only logical answer. But, what? but that is... That is a bit of an animal mystery. It is. Which segues us to... Drum roll, please. Animal mysteries! <gasps> yeah. Love it. Very, very popular segment. People absolutely... I mean, thousands of people hitting me up Millions. on DM. They are <laughs> loving it. I don't know, Forrest. This one... I don't know if you're going to be able to solve this. Lay it on me. Big maybe, time. Or maybe I'm stupid. You look stupid for sure. Well, <laughs> I mean, look. John Gardner. Nah, I look great. <laughs> John Gardner is uh, hes a nice guy. He's just driving his truck, pickup truck. On Tuesday afternoon, he's cruising down the uh, U.S. Highway 501 in South Carolina. Mm. It's, it's the first clue. All of a sudden, he sees a big black, he describes it as a big black dot flying towards him through the sky. Mm. All of a sudden, it hits his windsh- windshield, Whoa! smashes his windshield, which you know nearly causes him to crash the car. He manages to safely get his car into the shoulder mm. to, dis- to discover... An alien? A uh, two-foot-in-diameter turtle. 
lodged in his windshield Whoa. that had flown from the sky into his windshield. A flying turtle. Can okay. I answer first? Because I know the answer. Yes, go, Peter. Go ahead. The turtle obviously got bit by a bald eagle, <laughs> gained the powers of the bald eagle, and then Dude, a shortly after foot? lost the powers and fell out of the sky. That must be it. I thought you were going to say that the turtle went online and purchased wings using Bitcoin, Peter. Um, <laughs> I'm going to break this down into a couple pieces. So we're in sure. South Carolina. There are a number mm-hmm. of native turtle species. I'm guessing that this was a slider, two foot in diameter, meaning a big hard shelled turtle. The only other turtles that get that big are snapping turtles, but odds are they're too heavy to be lifted or up in the air. And the soft shell turtle, which if that hit a windshield at 60 miles an hour would leave a very big smear, but probably not crack it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so we've, we've got it. We've narrowed it down to a big slider, big, probably yellow belly slider, two foot long, hard shell turtle. Now, the question is, what got this animal up to being hit up to to windshield height? Now, there have been uh, freak incidences in the past where it has literally rained fish, frogs, and turtles. Uh, one of the ten plagues from the Bible is of raining frogs, I believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. frogs. And that uh, they, historians have traced that back to being one of these weird occurrences where negative pressure actually sends groups of animals into the air and then deposits them in other places. But Would that be ooh. possible with an animal this large? I, I don't know, as I'm not a meteorologist, but <laughs> I don't think that a single individual flying turtle... You're a broologist. <laughs> um, that's right, I'm a broologist, is the case. So, I'm going to say that the only possible answer... No freeway overpass, nothing like that, Patrick? No freeway overpass. Okay. And no more so, hints. No more hints. <laughs> <laughs> so, the answer to the animal mystery is that a very a large turtle was picked up by what I can only imagine was an osprey, an aquatic fish and turtle eating bird, Hmm. launched into Mm -hmm. the air, up in the air, that bird realized it could no longer carry such a heavy meal and dropped it over the freeway where our our nice man, whose name I've forgotten, was driving way too fast and a turtle came crashing through his windshield. So if the osprey was flying in the opposite direction, right? So as if it was like in the other lane... It's flying at how fast do you think an osprey could fly with a with a heavy turtle? Let's say fifteen miles an hour. Yeah, let's miles say fifteen hour? miles an hour. So it's moving at fifteen miles an hour in the opposite direction. It releases it. That turtle is now going to be continuing to move at fifteen miles an hour. Well, well, uh, as it falls from the sky, in addition to hitting terminal velocity, because. It will be falling uh, yeah. down, so the speed will actually increase with gravity. Hence the black dot that he sees coming at him yep. from the sky <laughs> yep. directly yep. into his windshield. All right. Well, I mean, that was my guess. That's what I said. I said, that's exactly <laughs> you what said I said. That, no, you said that a bald eagle bit the turtle it, and the turtle gained the power of that's flight the same as a result. Thing. That is <laughs> it's the exact same thing. It did. Mystery solved. Mystery solved. All right, so so nice. what was it? What what actually happened? I mean, are are you just they don't know? They don't I mean, know. Fucking, what kind of animal mystery the, is this? He didn't pull the turtle out of the windshield, and the turtle was like, <laughs> "You're never gonna guess." <laughs> are you sure? Because if he did, <laughs> it wasn't part of the story. If he did, all right. Oh boy, I think Forrest right. just solved it though. I, I'll buy that a hundred percent. Yeah, like that. Legit. I think. I think that is definitely a better solve than what we had for the uh, exploded squirrel in Lake Arrow. Yeah, that was know. something. That was a good um, guess. <laughs> that was a tough uh, one, though. What, what I think really happened with the Lake Arrowhead one was her insane neighbors were just carrying squirrels around and throwing them at people's houses. That's, Probably. That's, that's, that's the obvious answer. There's not a lot else to do up there. So yeah, squirrel tossing is a good tag. So speaking of uh, small to not small things that fly around that go unseen. I saw something, and, and you guys know how much it tickles my fancy when Ooh. there's a rediscovery of a giant blue bee that was rediscovered. But here's what I love about the story. We think big, big bee rediscovered, okay, some jungle in Borneo or somewhere in Africa that nobody's been. Guess where this blue bee happened to be re- rediscovered, Peter? And don't say anything about the internet or Bitcoin, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that's so negative and shirtless um <laughs> i mean you're you're alluding to the fact that it's like something insane so i'm just gonna go ahead and say that it's like alaska well let me ask you this what's the most insane state in north america fucking alaska no 
It's Florida, clearly. Florida? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but that was <laughs> a very long-winded way of getting to that in Florida, scientists found a blue bee, beautiful-looking bee, that hasn't been seen in five years mm. flying around, and they are attributing the fact that this animal is out and about to coronavirus. Wow. Interesting. How so? What was it doing before? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, and that's one of the things is is it's a big world. There's a lot of places to hide. And this bee obviously had, <laughs> no pun intended, flown under the radar <laughs> for uh, the last five years or so. And um, yeah, uh, all of a sudden, 17 of them, it wasn't just one of them, um, popped up in the Lake Wales area, which is exactly where we shot an episode of Extinct or Alive, by the way. Very remote, very swampy, and scientists found this incredible looking blue bee. And um, it's the first time it's been seen in five years. So really exciting rediscovery. It is, and it's uh it's right in your wheelhouse. Is it it's not an extinct animal though. It's just a it's just a rare find. Well basically extinction is on a thirty year timeline. Mm. So if this animal had gone another twenty five years without being found, it basically it, it more or less would have been considered extinct. But it did five years. At that point, we call it a lost species, and then sure enough, turn back up. Blue bee, man, that's kind of cool. What gives? What makes it blue? Why would it? What, what would be the advantage for a bee being blue? Well, blue. This is really interesting when it comes to nature. Blue is the rarest natural color in nature. When you think of a bird, you think of a snake, you think of a lizard, whatever. You don't think of blue. Um, so it turns out blue is one of the rarest colors in nature. And I don't know this bee. I don't know that much about it, other than the small article I've read. But my guess would be that this animal has this unique blue coloration for sexual selection so that other bees of the same species, the same way a peacock is bright blue, it stands out. Um, it's not good for hiding from wild animals because it's such a rare color, it stands out, but it is really good for sexual selection. So if you're in a swarm of honeybees and you're the bright blue one and another bee of that same species is looking up at said swarm, they can pick you out to mate with you. That's how I get picked out to be mated with. No one's ever picked you. I wear blue shirts. <laughs> and you're the shape of a bee, the shape of a bumblebee. I have a, I have a mean sting, too. So you better put a yeah. shirt on next time with fucking <laughs> podcast. You're nasty. Sting you are you nasty. fucking shoulder. Dude, like from Planet Earth and Life and a lot of those high-end like uh, wildlife documentaries, you, see, you know, there's all this great footage of like bird mating rituals, like the Birds of Paradise mm -hmm. and, and quite a few other ones. It's always the male bird that has the wild colors and the wild yep. plumage and all that. And then the, like you look at the birds of paradise, the males are like these crazy insane colors and they do these dances. And the female bird of paradise is just like a little brown smudge. Yep. yep. And there's a reason why, for why, that. Why? Like why is, why does the male have to show off so much? I mean, humans, it's the same goddamn thing. <laughs> it is. Um, we show off. Look at you two and, now. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like the males are the one who has to show off. It is. Um, it's a good. It's a good observation, and this might not be the most popular opinion because I feel it's the case with humans and animals. We're expendable as mm, males. Yeah, that's true. We are biologically expendable, right? Mm -hmm. The yeah. three of us um, are all interchangeable, right? One woman has to raise a baby. One female has to nurture and raise that baby. You need her breast milk. You need her to incubate it. You need to grow the fetus, everything else, right? But any one of us three on this call could impregnate that woman and create offspring. So males <laughs> right. are, they are useless. So We really are. We really we are. are. God damn it. We're 100% we're, 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 we're right. We're walking dicks. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, right. we are expendable. So nature makes it so that, you know, only the strongest male survives. And a good way of testing it is make sure every male is peacocking, right? Everyone is, mm -hmm. is the, the buffest, the biggest, the standoutest. You know, if you're a peacock, you're the one with the biggest tail feathers that gets mated with. Well, guess what? If you have the biggest tail feathers, you're also the most useless at flight. So what, <laughs> what nature right. does is it goes, hey, if you're the biggest, you can mate, but you still have to actually survive the gauntlet of life in order to pass on your genetics. Right. And, um, and that's, why, that's why you always have all these males that have these show-off um, colors and looks and, and even things that they do, like the birds of paradise building the nests that expend tons of energy. Because if they can survive that and survive the wild, then they're worthwhile to mate with. Oh, when you put it like that, it's so grim. It is. Yeah. It is so grim. And it's you, pretty But you're 100% right. I mean, you need like, the whole world needs like 100 males to sustain our population. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. No, you, you could just yeah. be a pump factory. I mean, you could literally just walk, yeah. around, walk around and pregnant and go down to Venice Beach Boardwalk when there isn't a pandemic and tell me that's not exactly what's going on. Like you don't have a bunch yeah. of males, shirts optional, 
you know, sweaty. <laughs> like oh they're way too big. Not one of them can run a quarter mile. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they are. Right. <laughs> and, and you have a bunch of girls oogling them, and that's you know, it's it's a birds of paradise all over again. Are the girls oogling uh, them? I, I I mean, are girl are women attracted to like if, big if, muscly if meatheads, or are they attracted to like meager little wusses like Pat? Wow. I think when you say oogling them, you mean just going ugh, oogling them. Yeah, I mean, according to this, just this first source that I found, and the math makes sense, a, a male human could reproduce uh, 1,800 times per year, right. whereas mm. a female human can reproduce once a year. Yep, right, exactly. So we are gar- we're garbage. Yeah, we're a waste. We are a waste, and none more so than Peter. My mom was right. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom called you a waste, dude? That explains a lot about you, for real. Yeah. You said he was a mistake. He had issues. That's why oh, you got your shirt off right now. Which is true. Uh, by the way, I've taken several screen grabs of you guys in many different positions while we've been Zooming, and they will all be going on <laughs> the wildtimespodcast.com. There will be a gallery of the photographs oh. so everybody can see you flexing and looking at your muscles and uh, just generally being like horrible horrible fucking dicks that walk around and try and fuck everything that is us all right guys is it time for the thing that i mean literally every listener's been waiting for or what yeah. what's that it's time <laughs> before I, i'm going to introduce the battle royale but before i do i got to give a shout out to Will Kelleher. He's our new producer for the Wild Times podcast, and Will has been absolutely smashing it. He put together the show doc today, and uh, he came up with five insanely awesome battle royale concepts. And I know we usually make them up on the fly, but Will's are like, they're just such a step above what we've come up with. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> All right. They're better than prison meals. <laughs> they are when better when than I talk to meals. Will on the phone, he's like, that's my dream. I was like, yeah, we just want a list of battle royals to go. He's like, that's my dream. And I was like, this <laughs> nice. is our guy. So let's, <laughs> Well, he did a good job. Which one are we going with for Let's us? dig in. So here we are, guys. Here's the hypothetical. It's 5 billion years in the future. Wow. All humans are extinct. The three of us fine gentlemen board a spaceship and return to Earth, Mm. only to find that unfettered evolution has crowned a new animal species king of the Earth. Hmm. Which three animals would be at the top of that list, and how would they have changed in 5 billion years of evolution? Okay, so are we creating a new animal or what are we doing we're each picking one let's take one let's do one right okay who is the king of the earth and how has he changed so we need to put ourselves five billion years ago t-rex was king right 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 Right. t-rex he gone yeah he gone yeah Yeah. but that's but so you really have free reign here to say who the king of the earth is now humans Mm -hmm. are not not on the radar and why and i know mine so i'll go first okay go ahead all right so it's five. If you take mine, if you take mine, I'm done with this podcast. <laughs> if you, if he takes yours out of all the possibilities, I know that there's definitely something going on between the two of you. That's yeah. Okay. Right. We, we have a nice penis to butt connection that really helps. <laughs> oh us. my goodness! Uh, I know you do. No doubt. Edit. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here's mine. So we land. We exit the spaceship. And just as the T Rex was once king, here stands at 35 feet tall. A mega insect. Now, this is no nor- normal <laughs> insect. A it's mega been, insect. It's been five billion years. I- insects have been able to evolve. They've been able to distribute blood across their entire bodies, growing larger and larger. This animal, closest relation of a cockroach, has mm, six legs. Oh it stands 35 feet tall. It has the mandibles of two enormous <sighs> chainsaws, the claws <laughs> of a praying mantis, the jacked legs of of a locust that are the diameter, uh, I don't know, they're just really big. <laughs> yeah, they're huge. And they're you sound huge. like you're and talking it, about yourself today. <laughs> and it runs down its prey on the plains of North America, the mega ant. It is terrifying. Oof. It's the gargantua roach. Oh, God, dude, disgusting. It, <laughs> Horrific. Well, I'll tell you what. Wait, is it smart? I mean, first of Wait, all. Wait, hold on, though. I have a question. One real quick question. Does it have a big, like, is it... Did it take over just because it's like big or, or does it actually have like a brain and was able to able to do things and fuck it? Like, does, is there a society? Are they building no. buildings? No. <laughs> Are they just <laughs> walking around in the fucking <laughs> jungle? Like, what's happening? <laughs> no, mammals 
uh, are, as I said before, birds had their turn, reptiles had their turn, <laughs> mammals have had their turn. It's insects' turn. It's okay. insects. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Just a and lot of burrows so, and holes. So, uh, yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Insects currently, now, they don't have brains, right? They have these, these clusters of nerves More, called yep. flu- fused ganglion. Mm-hmm. Has that morphed into a brain? Do they have any new powers or are they still just skittering around my fucking kitchen floor? No, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's five billion years in the future. Y- your they, kitchen floor is long gone, mate. They, <laughs> they do not have mammal brains. They have nothing but pure mm-hmm. instinct to kill and eat the way your cockroach does today. God. Uh, they, they reproduce and they, and they murder. Earth has turned into a total nightmare. Like yeah, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm it's assuming all the intelligent life has moved to other planets and universes by now. It's, it's hell here. And just these idiot fucking cockroaches are running around in this <laughs> shithole planet. Gar- Gargantua roach. Okay. <laughs> Gargantua roach. Hashtag. All right. Well, so my animal which is going to compete with the gargantua roach <laughs> and overcome it mm. um, and, and actually take over one year after this Smart. Uh, has gone in the opposite direction. Evolution has changed my animal in, in a different way. Um, what happened was uh, the octopus. He, uh, <laughs> of course. Of ca- course. <laughs> came up out of the ocean mm. um, because in the process of, of fucking up the planet, we, we, we messed up the ocean mm-hmm. pretty bad. Mm. There's, there's no more delicious uh, fish and, and yellowtail and mahi-mahi. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if you want even a nice piece of ahi tuna to eat. Uh, so the octopus came up. I don't know exactly how it works, but they no longer need to uh, live underwater. Okay. And they are now land animals. Okay. Right. In the process of these billions and billions of years, they just didn't need to be as big. They didn't need as much size. Right. Okay. Because they're mostly eating ants now, right? Right. And so uh, they're tiny. I mean, they are the size <laughs> of your average. So you, each octopus is about the size of, of just a, a good-sized ant. Wow. <laughs> and there are billions of them per acre. <laughs> Jesus. So, I mean, you can't even see the grass anymore. It's, it's like barely any grass is surviving because the sunlight can't even penetrate through this never-ending <laughs> carpet of octopus <laughs> that are just all over you, and they are climbing up the legs of these cockroaches it's a it's a problem for the cockroaches you had yeah. nightmares about the cicadas last night didn't you i can I, hear this is stuck with you i can't stop itching yeah because i'm thinking about the cicadas <laughs> i mean I, I i i held off this time are you done with yeah wait with let's that? give it a name yeah, ex- except i want to name it yeah. and it's it's the instead of octopus it's slightly changed and it's it's now called the octopieces <laughs> because they're cute like a little Reese's pieces. <laughs> More candy bullshit. Oh, uh, that's yeah. good. All right, all right. Well, you're no, it wasn't so, Forrest. It was stupid and ridiculous, and you're both idiots. So <laughs> sorry. So how are you going to beat the gargantua roach and the octopieces? Well, first before before we, I get into that, I, I'm a little a little irritated just because I I've known you for so long, Pat, and I know that you wrote a paper in high school or, or you had like a thesis on why an insect could never get as big as Forrest's insect. And I'm a little annoyed that you didn't even bring it up or contest his nonsensical idea of what would happen with these insects in 5 billion years. It's been 5 billion years. Evolution has changed them. They a know lots. Happened, yeah. Bro. Okay. It, fine. Yeah. All right. Why don't you take your... Earth, Earth didn't exist 5 billion so years I ago. Will, a fucking I will, cockroach can get big. All right. I will <laughs> now you, I will now explain the correct legitimate answer of what will honestly have happened in 5 billion years. We return to Earth, the three of us, you with your idiotic assumptions that animals of some type will still be ruling or even walking around on this fucking rock. And it will be a rock. It will be a rock with no vegetation. It will be covered in volcanic ash and rock, but it won't matter. There will be no atmosphere. I don't even know how we landed or stayed on the rock. (laughs) What is going on? (laughs) But it will not matter because much like the sound with which my blue whale enters the picture, all that's left is the consciousness of humanity. Just floating. That's terrible. And entering our minds as That's what? Garbage. Terrible. What you're saying is dumb. You're an idiot. So, <laughs> so wait, are we? Are we like able to perceive uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> the fuck. I was. I was. I wasn't done, mate. We we enter. Uh, we enter onto the God. rock. I don't even know why we went back when we saw it was a fucking rock covered in volcanic ash. You get idiots. I was like, Memories. let's not go there. We got to go somewhere else. Nostalgia. That's right. <laughs> 
Yeah, and then and then obviously the consciousness of humanity. We're we're, we're evolved, man. We, we computers, AI. It's all taken over. It's all combined together. It's floating around in the ether of the universe, and it, it enters our mind. We're the only physical beings left in physical beings. That's right, not beings. I said beans like lentils. I know they scare you, Pat. <laughs> For us. For us. <laughs> I've had a, I've had a couple white claws. I I don't know. This is a hard one. <laughs> Fuck you, Will. Okay. All right? <laughs> this is tough. <laughs> All right, oh so do us a favor. Thank you so much to everyone who's left comments. It's fun to it see is. who the viewers start slash listeners are uh, thinking are winning. Yep. Uh, and I just want let to- us know, is it Forrest Gargantua Roach, my octopuses, or uh, my whatever acid ether. trip? Uh, I, I lost this one. On. I should have taken my shirt off. Yeah, so so Milena, when you do our art for this one, just keep in mind you get to build a 35-foot cockroach with chainsaw mouth. You get to build the world's cutest octopuses, and <laughs> and then just leave a blank space for whatever Peter just explained. Dude, just, that just is some fucking air. meta. That's right. <laughs> I, maybe I should have taken my shirt off. I would have had a better answer. All right. <laughs> yeah, you would have. I thought you were at least going to say there was like a cloud of Wi-Fi floating where everyone's consciousness was available. But you I, I had too shit. many. I, I had too many. Too much fucking white claw <laughs> running through my brain to f- complete the fucking vision. All right. <laughs> Fuck off. We're recording this at three p.m. By the way, everyone. So, <laughs> well, Peter, your fucking thing is really stupid. It's a cloud. Nobody likes You're right. it. It's um, true. It's nonsense. You, you will gain redemption next week, and uh, I got to tell you, we, we also have a special guest next week. Uh, I talked to my, my longtime buddy, Jordan Mayshock, a.k.a. J-Dub, nice. and uh, we're going to call him up, and he said that he's got some shitty stories of me to tell about the, the many number of times that I've almost killed him spearfishing. So uh, <laughs> next week, we're going to do the spearfishing podcast. We're going to talk about uh, free diving, spearfishing, and we're going to have Jordan weigh in on how I'm pretty much the world's best diver. And, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, and, and that'll be lots of fun. So um, until then, I think we will say good night. Good night. Good night.